This is Eyewitness News up close. Crime in New York City at its lowest levels in more than half a century. But now a possible new threat to New York City security and a big problem for the NYPD and local and federal prosecutors here. In Washington, the House just approving a bill allowing people with concealed weapons permits to carry their guns across state lines. Have a carry permit in, say, Arkansas? And New York would have to honor it. So would New Jersey. So would Connecticut. So what would this mean? Our guest this morning, New York City Police Commissioner Jimmy O'Neill. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to Up Close. I'm Bill Ritter. New York City on pace to another record-setting year when it comes to crime reduction. All major crimes down, except for crimes in the subway and except for rape, which NYPD brass now attribute to a so-called Harvey Weinstein effect. Women coming forward to report a crime that they may not have reported before the Weinstein scandal. Before we get to our interview with Commissioner O'Neill, here's political reporter Dave Evans. At the 32nd precinct in Harlem last week, the mayor and police commissioner announced new crime figures, and they show New York City is incredibly safe. On murders, we've had 53 fewer this year. That's a 17% drop from last year. Here's the bottom line. If these trends continue through this month, the people of the city will have had the safest year on record in over half a century. The mayor and police commissioner say the reason for such a big crime drop because of a new, kinder, gentler force, community policing, neighborhood patrols where police and communities work together. Someone knows their officer. It's a whole new day. And the officer knows them by first name. But the one big concern is recent figures on rape. Yes, overall, rapes in 2017 are down in the city by about 2%, but the last couple of weeks have been troubling an uptick as we see more and more publicity about cases like Harvey Weinstein and so many others accused of sexual assault. In November alone, we saw a 27% uptick in rapes. The reason? Perhaps because of all that publicity. It looks like more, 30 more people have come forward than last year. That's good news. Uh, and we hope they find resolution. There's nothing worse than this that could happen. These are rapes alone. Police say that number 30 is for old rapes, those occurring in the past but reported this year. 255 last year, 285 this year. Dave Evans, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And we welcome NYPD Commissioner Jimmy O'Neill. Good morning. Thanks for coming, Commissioner. Morning, Bill. How are uh, you? We'll, we'll get to the, I'm fine, thank you. We're going to get to the, uh, in the weeds about the crime stats in a second. But, but some of the things that your department now worrying about, you personally too and professionally, uh, is this concealed carry permit law passed by the House. The Senate still has to pass it. Uh, and there's some question about that, but maybe not as much question as you'd like. What's your biggest worry about this? Well, right now they have 38 sponsors in the Senate. And uh, in the House, I think it's passed 231 to, two, to 198. Got to take a look at the level of uh, violence in New York City. I'm just, I'm just talking about New York City. That's where I'm the police commissioner. That's, uh, my job is to keep people safe. Uh, we are at levels of crime we haven't seen since the 50s. The homicide number, we're down 53 homicides. We're down 207 shootings. Uh, last year, we were uh, first time below 1,000. We had 998. This year, we're down 207 shootings. We don't need more guns in New York City. Last year, you were worried about too many gangbangers with guns. Has that gone down? Yeah, all of our categories of, of crime. Uh, it's the work that we're doing. It's, it's neighborhood policing. Uh, it's an important component of this. And, and a big part of that is, is what we're doing, what Bob Boyce and his investigators are doing um, with the gangs and crews. We're conducting, in conjunction with the prosecutors, the local prosecutors and, and the district and the U.S. attorney's officers, we're conducting short-term, medium, and long-term cases. Uh, these, and when we go out and do a takedown, uh, they're pre-indicted, the subjects are pre-indicted, and whoever we're locking up, these are people with, uh, most of the time, with a history of violence, uh, some guns, some, some financial fraud, and they get in real time. So this is, this is why crime's going down in New York City. You and your predecessor, Bill Braddon, and his predecessor, Ray Kelly, all complained about and moaned and groaned about the so-called iron pipeline, where the, the, these, these organized crime, no matter who they are, but uh, organized crime people, basically took guns legally from somewhere else, or illegally, from an, uh, easily gotten from other right. states, and brought them up to New York where they would sell them or use them. Uh, is that decreased over the last year? Yeah, we have, uh, we have great cooperate, uh, cooperation with our federal partners, specifically the ATF and, and the FBI, and they're, they're helping us with these cases. But the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act, I, I've been speaking uh, out against this for months. Uh, myself, Cy Vance, the other district attorneys in New York City, and I said it was a risk, risk to public safety. It's more than that. It's insanity. Uh, we do not need 
more people with guns in New York City. Uh, I don't need somebody from another state coming into New York City, coming into Times Square, coming onto the subway with a weapon and, and, and something happens. Now, there is training uh, in most states to, to, to carry a firearm, but certainly not to the level of, of the training that the police officers in New York City. Now, we're talking about uniforms, we're talking about plain clothes people. We don't need more guns in New York City. What do you worry about? Uh, these are people who get carry permits in other states. Several states already have those permits. Right. And they're going to be able to get in there. And you would have to honor it as a New York City police officer, police commissioner, as head of the department. The state would have to honor that. There or are, are you saying you're not going to honor that? There are some states that don't require anything. Uh, they don't even require a permit. Somebody can carry a concealed weapon. Uh, do we want the people from those states coming into New York City? Do we want people with a criminal history from New York going to, to get a residency in those states and coming back with guns? It's, just, it's, a, it's a threat to uh, everybody in this city, and it's a threat to the, uh, to the men and women of, uh, of the NYPD. Besides speaking out, though, Commissioner, what can you do about it? Uh, we can keep lobbying. We can hope that the, uh, the Senate has some sense and, and not pass this. This, this, is, a, uh, this is a threat to, uh, to all the great works that been, that's been done in this uh, city over the last 25, 30 years. We don't do this by ourselves, the NYPD. We have our law enforcement partners. We have the prosecutors. We have all 8.5 million people working on this issue. We don't need more guns in New York City. So let's, let's go th into the weeds about this a sure. little bit. What kind of scenarios are we talking about? We're talking about Bad people, quote unquote, bad people coming in who have maybe permits in other states that don't have very tough gun laws, coming in here and committing crimes? Or are we talking about, you know, an everyday Joe and Mary who have a gun carry permit in, in another state, law abiding citizens who maybe see something and do something? We're, we're talking about both scenarios. Uh, I'm, most, I'm most concerned about uh, people with criminal records coming into the city with, uh, with guns that. It would be almost impossible for us to verify if they're, if they're legally held because there's no na national database. So if somebody from another state comes in here that doesn't have a, uh, a permitting system, it would be impossible for our, our police officers to verify whether those guns are legally held or not. And, and quite frankly, I'm concerned about people from other states who are uh, legally carrying weapons. They, they might be law-abiding citizens. Uh, they go to hotels. They go to cars. You know, these guns uh, are... are there's a possibility that some of them may be stolen. Uh, we, we just don't need it. I can s see a scenario in Times Square. You know, you go to Times Square, there's just thousands of people over there, there every day. And, if, and if God forbid something happens there. You know, we are, we are the professionals. Uh, NYPD, I have the Critical Response Command there every day. I have the Strategic Response Group there. Uh, I, I, just, I just can't, uh, I can't fathom why somebody would think this is a good idea. And we're not talking about other states. They, they can do what they want. I'm just talking about New York City. Uh, you know, listen, there's a cultural difference, too. Things that someone from Arkansas or some other state that has a legal carry per, uh, permit law right now uh, may consider kind of weird. This is a cop here would say, well, that's, that's not just the way some people are here. And it's no reason for panic. No reason to certainly draw your gun if you, and feel threatened by this. Yeah, yeah, without a, I mean, without a doubt. And, and you, ride, you ride the subways, you know, five to six million people a day on the subways. And we have, we have people patrolling in the subways. We have people patrolling on the streets. Uh, we are at a point now, as I said, we have record low. 1990, there were 5,000 shootings in New York City. Uh, this year, uh, we're looking probably at about 800 shootings. And that doesn't happen by accident. There's a lot of hard work that goes into this. It's, it's the cops that are out there every day. And it's not just the cops that are out there now. It's all the people that have come before us. And, and to jeopardize uh, the safety, of the men and women of the NYPD, I think, is unconscionable. One sixth the number of shootings since in 1990. In 1990, there were 2,200 murders. You told me. So yeah, 2,200. And now murders. we're we're down to a fraction of that. Yeah, we're uh, we're on pace to have a record year, and 52 percent of those murders are committed by gunfire. The NRA, which supported this, uh, you know, cross state lines uh, carry permit uh, acknowledgments, uh, they would say, well, you know, you, you just don't trust the people that have guns. They'll do fine. We need more guns on the street because they'll protect the citizenry. Uh, it, it, I find that to be just a, uh, a ridiculous argument. It's not a question of not trusting people with guns. The NYPD gets paid to keep people safe. Uh, we are the professionals. We're the ones with the tactical training. We're the ones with the firearms training. So just to have somebody from another state, especially a state that's not, uh, somebody that's not used to, 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 to the complexity of New York City, to be walking around with, with, a, uh, with a pistol, uh, it's, just, it's just unsafe. Congress already passing this law. If the Senate passes its version of it as well, which they may very well do soon, um, 
what can you do about it? I know the mayor has said, and you have said too, you've backed this very strongly. We are a sanctuary city. We are not going to you know, hand over and deport people to the federal immigration pe uh, officers. We're here to prevent crime, and we're not going to be, we are a sanctuary city, and we're going to abide by that, even if it means federal funding is getting cut. C do you have any recourse like that? Uh, and this is, this is something that we're just have to going to continue to look and uh, uh, consider. Uh, hopefully, the, the Senate will, will, will have some sense and not let this move forward. But if it does, it's, it's going to create a, a very difficult situation for, for us, for all the other law enforcement agencies, and quite frankly, for all eight and a half million New Yorkers. One of the ironies here is that it is very difficult for anyone. If Bill Ritter wanted to go get a gun, a permit to carry from the NYPD, it would be very difficult for me to get that. Yeah, it's, 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 a, uh, it, it's a big process, and you really have to show the need to carry that weapon. And, and that's what we want. That's what we want. If there's a need, there's a process that we go through. You get screened. We have to make sure that you have the proper training. We have to make sure that you can safeguard that weapon properly. And there are, there are sanctions that, that if you don't, once you do get a, a carry permit in New York City, if, if something happens, uh, if you get involved in something or if you lose that gun, there's sanctions and you're going to lose your license. Uh, with, with the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act, all that goes out the window. When you lobbied against this, what did the Congress people say who were in favor of it? What's their argument? Uh, it just, just it, I guess it's it's the same argument that uh, the NRA puts forth that uh, you know these are uh, legally held uh, weapons in, in other states and that should should go across state lines and it's, it, there's no consideration for the differences in, in the municipalities and, and the major cities across the United States. We are just over two months away removed from the largest mass shooting in U.S. history in Las Vegas, and Congress passes this. There's some irony in that, it seems to me. Bit yeah, of irony. yeah th no, there is. I mean, uh, look at Connecticut, look at San Bernardino, look at Texas, look at Las Vegas. C come on, when are we all going to get some common sense here? Okay, you've been on the job for a year and a half. I want to talk about what you've learned, what the challenges still are, are ahead for you, and we'll talk more about the crimes, get in the weeds about those. You have to stay around for another sec section. Sure. Okay, thanks. We'll continue our conversation with NYPD Commissioner Jimmy O'Neill when Eyewitness News Up Close continues right after this.